Guys, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you will not regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back, and I do appreciate the support. Guys, listen. Yesterday, I did a video on Alexis Jackson. This is the lady that was freed in, on bond yesterday in Houston for uh, stomp, stomping a nine-year-old boy in the head. You know that she was in custody of and guys i'm gonna be honest with you as far as uh abuse you know you guys know how i stand on that but what happened after i did this video is something extraordinary because of the overwhelming support of the video i was contacted last night via the uh email address that i have at the bottom that you guys see by a family member who saw the video or somebody else saw the video and passed it along to her. She contacted me via email. She said she had information and is regarding Alexis Jackson and the nine year old boy whose name is Eddie. Now, this woman uh, today, I went and met with her and some other family members. They were good people. I sat down, we talked, I was there for about an hour. They gave their side of the story and they wanted to give nine-year-old Eddie a voice. They asked me to help. So I conducted an eight-minute interview to answer some of the questions that a lot of you guys asked in the comment section yesterday. I asked those questions and then I got details. Guys, I have videos. Her stomping him in the head. Like the uh, news article said, it didn't explain everything else and it said he had a burn on the face. I have the video of him getting his face burned. I have videos of the head stomp incident. I have three or four more things that are videos that this woman was being recorded and didn't know anybody else saw this. And that's the key. I got new details that nobody else knows. Um, but guys, I'm going to jump into this real fast. And I want you guys to pay attention because at the end of this eight minute interview, we're going to really get in this thing and cook. And trust me, I'm going to try to hold my composure. But I got to admit, guys, this is one of the saddest, most extreme cases of child abuse I've ever seen. And it does bother me because you cannot grow as a child if you forced to survive. No one can. You cannot grow when you're surviving. Let's roll this clip. Check it out. Hey, guys, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Dynamic Reason channel. And today I'm conducting an interview with family members of the uh, little boy that you've seen in the other uh, video that I did where uh, he was abused and the uh, 30 year old woman, Alexis, what's the last name? Jackson. Alexis Jackson had stomped on her head, on his head. So with me today, we have the grandmother of the uh, little boy and we have the aunt. And they want to speak and give their side of the story. So we're going to leave it at that. And we're going to jump into this. How you guys doing? We're doing just How right you holding now. up? Everything okay? No, we're trying to hold it out. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you, uh, when did you first come in contact with this information? And when was she first arrested when all this whole thing blew up? I first got the video on April the 19th, later on that evening, I want to say. So that's recently. Recently. And then um, she was arrested later on that night, too, I want to say. Not for sure. On the 19th? On the 19th. Okay. Who called the police? Who You called the police? Like, who, who alerted the authorities? I know. I think my other daughter, Erica, did. Oh, okay. Okay. We don't have to say no name. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, the whole situation, how long was she incarcerated? Or did she bail out the next day? Or? She bailed out the next day. She did bail out the next day. Okay, how did she bail out? Because, I mean, the bail was only $20,000. So she bailed out at, at what, 10%? $2,000? I want, I want so to say $2,000. So $2,000. How do you think, how did, how did she get out? I don't know. You don't, you guys don't know? No. Okay. That out um, another thing is this. How did she come in contact with the children, and how long have the children been over there? She's been in contact with the kids um, for a few years now. They all used to go to church together. Okay, so 
your daughter is friends with this woman. This woman is not family, guys. I found that out. So this lady no, is not a relative of you guys at all. No. Okay, that explains a lot of the abuse then. Um, so she was met by your daughter in church. Yes. And your daughter wound up moving and befriending them and moving and taking the kids with her. So yes. it's more than one child in the house yeah. as yes, of now. Yes, it's four kids there. And they're what, boys or? Um, three boy girls and three. one boy. So the boy that's being abused, he's the only boy over he's there. He's the only boy. Is he the oldest? No, no, next to the oldest. Okay, so he's second oldest. Yes. Okay. When you first seen these videos, right? Right. And guys, I want to make a disclaimer. With permission of the family, there are other videos out here that I've been sent that I can't release. But I mean, they are very descriptive and they are horrific. The one thing that the news outlet had mentioned was him having his head stomped on by this 30 year old woman. Now, what's messed up about that? There are five or six more incidents that I have witnessed and seen on camera that the news has not seen. Now, as we're speaking right now, I have a news media outlet that I've been speaking with since we've been over here. And, uh, they're supposedly on their way and i'm waiting for that so in the meantime i'm conducting my own video for you guys the uh community to get some of the facts before they come out in the live media so that's why i'm here another thing the the your your daughter doesn't live in there anymore right no she doesn't okay if she doesn't live there why are the kids still there it's a long story to it just in lemon terms um does she have custody of them? When she was staying there with them, they had um, gave her all kind of medications and stuff, had her signing Ill illegal paperwork saying that she's giving them temporary custody of the kids. Okay, forgive me for, I don't want to offend anybody. Does your daughter have any type of mental illness or anything like that? The only thing she has is slow learning. Okay, it's called slow learning? Yes. Okay. So she does have some type of mental disability that they yes. are taking advantage of. Right. Okay. That explains it. So now she's not there, but the kids are still there. The kids, you said she signed uh, paperwork. Is it any type of custody papers we that they had her sign? We have not seen any paperwork. We have not went to court or anything. No, what I'm saying is for her to leave the kids there and them being subject to abuse, especially the boy. Right. From right. the knowledge that you guys have. What's stopping you from taking the children out of the house? That's what I'm saying. Even though she just got arrested, it's direct reasoning to pull the children out. How come you guys haven't pulled the children out? Is there any type of custody that she has in place where you can't go get these kids? We are working on that. Um, the information that we had was incorrect and we find out the truth today. OK, so they're, they're going to contact you guys. Today. Yes, they're going to contact us today and they're okay. removing the kids today. Okay. Who does this lady live with? Is she by herself? No, she stays with another lady. Okay. And the cameras that were in the house, when she was doing all these abusive acts, she did not know about these cameras or she knew, but didn't know they were being recording her. She knew about the cameras, but she obviously didn't know that someone else was watching the cameras. Before. Okay. So she thought she only was privy to it. Yes. That explains a lot, guys. Did you hear what uh, the aunt just said? All of the stuff that was on camera, because in the video we were talking and I said, who sits there and watches this happen to a child? It was a home security camera that had picked this up. That's what it was. So as they were explaining to me earlier off camera, they set these uh, cameras up in the house. The mother had set the cameras up in the house and she was being recorded even though she knew the camera's in there, but she thought she was the only one, the abuser, Miss uh, Jackson. She thought she was the only one, you know, the cameras didn't have a feed outside of the home, but they did and other people were watching. That's how she got caught. But guys, listen, I uh, hope everything works out well with you. You know, we got the media coming over here. You guys got these new videos. You keep them under wraps. Do not pass those videos out. It's just a word of advice. Don't pass these videos out to nobody because it deals with a child and you can get in trouble. And also, all these events and all this stuff that you're hearing on the phone, you need to keep a journal. Y'all both do. You keep a journal, times, dates, 
when somebody calls, if y'all get threatened or anything, because word of mouth does not really hold up in court. They don't care. They only care about the facts. So make sure you guys write down all these facts and it'll help you along the way. Listen. I'm praying for y'all and seeing this. It was disturbing. When you sent me the videos last night, I mean, it really bothered me. And I, you know, I called you. I said, listen, I got to come over here today after I get off my job and really see what I can do. You know, I mean, we don't know each other, but I mean, the black community as a whole is the black community. And we all have to look at each other out. And that's the thing. A problem against you is a problem against me. We don't look out for each other at all. You know what I mean? Everybody mm -hmm. puts value in things that are fickle and have no meaning. This is a child's life at stake. Right. And you don't know what type of psychological counseling or ramifications it's going to have on his psyche. You know, from the videos that you showed me, that's bad. I mean, just the, the whole man. Mm, okay. But um, I appreciate you guys' time. We'll sit here and wait for the uh, media outlet to get here, and then I'll turn them over to you, and then... You know, I'll be on my way. But I mean, you guys got my number. You guys need help at any given time. You know, just give me a call and I'll use my resources as best I can to get you guys where you need to go. OK, but I mean, I'm praying for y'all and it, it'll be OK. I'm Stock Marcus T for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share and subscribe. You guys take care. Pray for the family, man. For real. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, guys, that was the interview. Um, you could see the family was visibly upset and by all means they should be because the videos they showed me today, I'm surprised that they had that much, uh, you know, restraint me on the other hand, I'm not a very emotional person, but I mean to see somebody that's my loved one going through that type of torture. And we will get into that in a second. Of what was done to this boy in graphic detail. So if you have children in that in the room, I suggest you remove them. Because I'm gonna be very descriptive. Because this little boy's story, like the family said, needs to be told, and I'm gonna tell it. They called me to do a job, and damn it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna speak tonight. On behalf of nine-year-old Eddie, we're gonna speak for him. If the system don't speak for him, police don't speak for him, his story gonna get out. Now this lady, Alexis Johnson, and her roommate or housemate, the lady that lived with her, Hazel Edwards. Guys, do you believe both of these people are in the church and they're doing this? Let's get into this story. Let's go with the head stomp first. Supposedly, on a news uh, channel, right, it said that he got his head stomped. Now, she says she stumped his head multiple times. I seen the video. There was another child there watching a young child. You know, very young. At least five years old. The video camera in the house, you know, the surveillance cameras in the house. Catches him on the ground, cowering. She's standing over him, kicking him in the face with the, the heel of her foot. Kicking him in the face. He's laying there on the ground getting kicked in the face. Several times she kicked him, guys. Then she took her foot and mushed it in his face. Think about that. Like he's common dog shit. Like she's getting it off her, her shoe on the curb. Mushed the grinder with shoes on now. In his face. Then this is the part that really messed me up. She... Put her foot on his face like this while he was on the ground. And he's a small nine years old. He's not a big nine year old. He's a small nine year old. Got on his face, put all her weight on him and stood on his fa face with all her body weight with, his, uh, with her other foot off the ground. That little boy not once made a sound. So that tells you what? They trained him to take punishment. You know how it is. You better not make a noise. And it seemed like every time like, they showed videos, it would almost be her and him isolated in incidents. Or like if somebody was there, she would be doing something like physical toying. But the extreme stuff, she waited until nobody was around and she pulled that bullshit on him. I'm not feeling it at all. Let's get into the next one. She put the burn on his face. 
She can say whatever she wants. A lot of people haven't seen this video. And I told the family, you don't show anybody these videos. This is your smoking gun. See, because in the house, she didn't think she was going to get caught. So what she did, she erased the video. She don't know other people got the video. That's the thing. Now, this is how he got the burn on his face, y'all. He had to go to Texas Children's Hospital and stuff for this. It's a whole big confusion over this, over the burn on his face. It shows the kitchen. You know them old gas, you know the normal natural gas uh, burners at the top? When you turn it on, it clicks, and then the blue flame comes out. Not the ones that are electric with that little coil on it. These are the real blue flame, the natural gas. The scene goes to the kitchen. The fire is burning hot. You can see the blue flame from the corner of the camera. You can see the blue flame, right, burning through the, the grate that holds the pot. You can see it's on super high. You hear the little boy screaming, man, Lord have mercy. You hear this little boy screaming. She has him by the throat and she's wrestling him over there. He's screaming and hollering. No, she takes his face, guys, like something out of a medieval torture movie and puts his face in that flame. I swear for God, man, when I seen that, I couldn't sleep last night. I laid in the bed and I thought, I said, man, it's got to be something I can do. I mean, it really, really was unsettling to me. I mean, even if I could show this video, I would never show that. It's humiliating and it's, it's the honor of that child. No. Guys, listen, I've never seen somebody do that to a child. You hear stories and stuff, but I mean, something like that, geez, to see it, it does something to your soul and your inside, man. It's like I was hurting for him. I felt that for him. Another scene. She got him in the kitchen, isolated. Guys. She smacked. She had him cornered. And every time they're doing something to this little boy, he has his hands to the side like they taught him to stand there and take the blow. And he's standing there. You can see he's tense. And she's talking. And he's just sitting there. He doesn't answer. She's talking. And she just winds up and hauls him across his face, hitting him like she was hitting a woman or a man. Just full. Power. Boom. Is she not no small lady? Guys, she smacked him and he stood there and took it. He buckled and then he came back. Then she hit him again and repeatedly like five times she hit him. And then the fourth time he cried. And she hit him again and shut him up. And he had to stand there that whole time. What kind of torture is that? And the way she's hitting him, I know he got to be going to school with bruises on his face because the family said it. That burn is what set them off with calling CPS. And that's how she probably got caught. Look at this, guys. Here's another video. You see the lady said he's in the house with three of his siblings. He has three sisters. One is a little, little girl. One is a middle child and one is an older child older than him. He's not so the, the other girl looks like she could be no more than 12, 13 at the most. This woman has the kids lined up in the, in the, in the kitchen. You don't see him because she's standing in front of him in the headlock like this where his face is exposed. She's telling the older girl to hit him in the face. To punch him in the face. She's not doing it. She's standing there. She's telling her to do it. I guess. She wasn't acting fast enough to hit him, so she lets him go, and I guess she's going to walk off to hit the girl because the girl won't hit him, and then the girl just hauls off and fires on him. Boom! Boom! I mean, stepping into his face, and he's standing there just getting beat. She beat him off the screen. You can see she was forced to do that. And I'm going to tell you something. Before I get to this last thing, well, second to last thing, you cannot tell me that in some uh, households where there's no man, there's a lot of animosity towards men and it's taken out on the youngest male child or the male child, the only male child there. You cannot tell me that. I've seen it multiple times in my life. This boy is in a house full of women. These women right here have some type of problem with men or some something against men or masculinity and they take it out on that boy. You cannot tell me they don't. They take it out on that boy. Why he the only target? 
It's crazy. Look at this. They attack him physically, psychologically, and sexually. Uh, they try to humiliate his masculinity. And if you don't believe it, here's proof. They got the boy naked in the house, beating on him in front of the girls. Dragging him outside naked. He's screaming, no, please. And it's crazy to avoid humiliation and shame of him being naked. He's willing to stay in the house that's killing him. It's hell over there. It's hell over there. And that boy's suffering. You hear what I said? He's suffering. Hear me out. They attacked his masculinity. His masculinity is his genitals. Hazel Edwards on camera. Now, all this is on camera. I seen this. I'm not telling you what I was told. I seen these videos. She's sitting a big ass down. She has the boy standing in front of her while she's sitting down. He's facing her with his penis out. And she has vice grips on his penis. And he's standing there for 20 seconds taking that pain. And she's talking to him while she's doing it. What the fuck is wrong with us? What's wrong with them? This screams death penalty all the way. And I shouldn't talk like that. But damn, this is you cannot fix this. You cannot fix this. This hurt me so bad to hear and see this. That kid is the future. What kind of psychological uh, problems you think he going to have? How you think he going to feel about women? Think about it. How you think he going to feel about women? Think. Like I said in the video yesterday, he might be a womanizer now, or he might be an abuser of woman, women, or he might be ev something even worse. And I'm not putting that on him, but this is how that bullshit starts. When you're taught pain is a, uh, as a weapon and your household lack love. Like I told you, you can't imagine, you can't dream. You can't do anything when you're trying to survive. He's missing out on his childhood. I bet when he's in school, he hates going home. And that's a crazy feeling. At his young age, he should want to go home. He shouldn't want to be in school. Guys, listen. There is good news. When the lady reached out to me and I seen all these videos. It touched my soul and it bothered me. Like I said, I didn't get no sleep last night. I spoke uh, with Miss Carolyn this morning with the grandmother. And I called, I used my resources of what I, you know, try, you know, what I knew about. And I called several news outlets. And they were supposed to come over there today. But when I called them earlier, they had so many different spots they were going to that they couldn't get out there in time. So they called and re uh, scheduled for tomorrow to come out there. Also, the police are being sent out to the house tomorrow. You know, they went out there tonight from what I've been told, and they're going to go out there tomorrow pending investigation. They do have the videos. And uh, supposedly they're supposed to be conducting some type of action is going to be taken tomorrow. Either way, CPS. Needs to get those children out that house. Now, I know I'm not family or anything like that. But what I, you see what I said in that interview? A strike on a child should affect everybody. If it affects him, it affects me. Because I come before him. And if you can't speak for a child, who the fuck are you? Think about it. When a child hurts, it's everybody's business because that's the future after we're the past. Guys, listen, I'm going to end it like this. I hope he gets the help he needs. The news outlet will be out there tomorrow. 
they will interview these people. Hopefully it'll be what I requested. Investigative unit of the media will go out there. They will get all of this information. It will reopen the case. I mean, she's still pending going to going to court for this, but it will bring out new details that the media don't know. And I told them, show them everything because this little boy's story got to be told. And it's a million times this happens where people turn the other cheek and then the child winds up dead and everybody's crying and crawling over the casket. I want to avoid this. I don't know him. I got a seven year old daughter that's close to his age. I cannot imagine the hell of thinking he lives there. His mother's not there. That's another thing, guys. His mother's not in the home. His whole world was different before he moved in that house. And can you imagine being going through all of that torture and nobody saving you and the people that you think that raised you and the people that will protect you are not there. The feeling of hopelessness that this young man must be going through. I can't allow that. I cannot allow that. Any child. I will be in contact with uh, the family tomorrow. And I'll be uh, in contact with the news outlet to make sure they get over there and these people don't get lost in the system. Because we got to be very vigilant in getting these children out of that house and bringing these two assholes to justice. I'm Stock Market Steve. I'm sorry for going off, but you know how it is on this channel. It's all love here. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't just talking about the black community. I'm talking about humanity. We got to do better. But I, I, I'm extremely uh, keen on the black community. We will not get the respect until we start to respect ourselves as a whole and move as a whole cohesive unit towards a better tomorrow for us as a people. I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Like I said, leave me a comment, man. I'm sorry I was a graphic, but his story has to be told, and they gave me the permission to tell it, so damn it, I'm going to tell it. They're probably, YouTube will probably strike me for it, but who gives a shit? Listen, you guys be good, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Sorry for the delay of getting this video up so late.